Welcome back to On The Bubble Podcast. My name is Josh Liston. Today, we're looking at the unexpected return of sci-fi drama, Stargate Universe. Today's episode was produced and edited by myself as part of my new podcast production company, Soup to Nuts Podcasting. You can find out more at souptonutspodcasting.com. And if you don't happen to have your own podcast and need some audio editing, which I'm assuming is 99.9% of everyone listening at the moment, head on over to onthebubblepodcast.com for all the details about today's episode. Okay, let's talk Stargate Universe. Quote, The one thing no one anticipated. Stargate fans seemed to like the lighter elements of previous series and some had a hard time adapting to the darker tone of Stargate Universe. Unquote. That was a small section of a Blaster.com article from 2012 by Trent Moore, referencing some of the more unexpected reactions to the Stargate Universe show, the tone, the writing, and the story arc. It was believed that a darker tone would be one of the hallmarks of Stargate Universe. And as you heard from Trent Moore, that darkness turned out to be one of the things that long-time Stargate fans had the hardest time adapting to and also enjoying in Stargate Universe. So just to sum up those feelings around the show, what was expected of Stargate Universe and what eventuated, we'll go back to Trent Moore again with another quote. The show was not the hit everyone had expected from the outset. Unquote. So how exactly did Stargate Universe find itself on the bubble? For a show that had a lot of expectation, a heavyweight cast, and also a darker tone, which given the success once again of a show like the reimagined of Battlestar Galactica, which had drawn a lot of attention back into the idea of a darker sci-fi TV genre, where did Stargate Universe go wrong? This is something that series co-creator Brad Wright has spoken quite directly to in the past, particularly when attributing the season two decline to changes in the time slot. So it went from Friday night to Tuesday night, back to Friday again. It was a bit of a mismatch of the schedule and also obviously the tone of the show that we talked about that didn't grab core Stargate fans the way that creators like Brad Wright thought that it might. And although I couldn't attribute directly the following quote to Wright, it's believed he has expanded upon not just his previous statement about the failed schedule, but also the lack of response from existing Stargate fans that the creators probably thought wouldn't quite be so negative. So we'll go to a quote now from Wright. Once again, this isn't attributed, but it has come up in my research as something that he is believed to have said from multiple sources. Quote, I don't think if we, for any reason, go away, it's an issue necessarily of the quality of the product that we've been making. I think getting moved on the schedule has hurt us. And the fact that some of the fans that liked SG-1 and Atlantis were so angry that they deliberately hurt us, which was unfortunate. Unquote. So it's quite obvious that one of the co-creators, at least of the show, felt that the show may not have got a fair go from Sci-Fi, the network that was carrying Stargate Universe in major markets, but also they maybe misinterpreted what it was about the Stargate mythology that fans of previous TV shows loved most, or the bulk of them loved most. So to be more specific, on May 12th, 2011, Sci-Fi explained their reasons for cancelling the show focusing mainly on the ratings decline from Season 1 through Season 2, which fell continuously as Season 2 progressed. Now, fans reacted angrily to that assertion, not just to the cancellation of the show, but the fact that Sci-Fi didn't seem to take any responsibility for moving the show around into a lot of challenging time slots, and SGU becoming the victim of pressures that very few shows would have been able to stand up to multiple schedule changes, challenging time slots as the shows were moved around, was never going to allow the show to become all that it could be. So the other thing that fans were angry about, and it's probably the reason why SGU 
has made it onto On The Bubble podcast, was once again, the end of season two was left on a massive cliffhanger. I wasn't a massive Stargate Universe fan, and in saying that, I wasn't a huge Stargate fan, but even I was left just so disappointed with the way that the show was left. With core characters having their storylines left right up in the air, it was a disappointing way for a show to leave the end of a season, given that it was known that the show had struggled for ratings and it had also been moved around in the schedule, whether to help the show or to bury the show. It's not quite clear. Depends on, I guess, if you're the management of sci-fi, the channel, or a hardcore SGU fan. I'm certain that feelings would be diametrically opposed on that particular subject. But regardless, fans moved straight into a letter-writing campaign, took to social media, and drove a lot of online action, fueled mostly by their annoyance with sci-fi and the schedule. But as we came to the end of Season 2, about how massive the cliffhanger was, given that it was known that the show was struggling well before that last episode went to air. Now, I'm going to do something I wouldn't normally do in an episode of On The Bubble Podcast. I'm going to fast forward multiple years. In this case, six years to today, being the middle of June 2017, Stargate Universe is making its official return. But not as a sci-fi channel production. And in fact, it's not as a television show at all, but instead as a comic book series created and championed by indie publisher American Mythology. Now, the comic world, I'm not familiar with at all. So I was going to read out the names of the authors and the illustrators, but they're not people that I know anything about. So not only am I at risk of completely butchering their names, but also I don't know whether they're credible sources or not. But even as a non-comic book reader, I was pretty familiar with the name American Mythology. So the SGU series, will be subtitled Back to Destiny. The first issue will be out in late June. And for those who haven't seen the show, Destiny was the name of the ancient ship on which the entire storyline over two seasons rolled out. Finally for today, I think we all know that SGU is not the first genre television show to see their continuation roll out through a different medium. Now, what comes to mind for me are two shows that I deeply loved basically the shows that got me into genre television, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and then later Firefly, they saw their continuations in a canonical way via graphic novels and to the layman person on the street, a comic book. So it remains to be seen whether SGU can garner any of that kind of serious cult audience in a different platform, in a different medium. At the very least, though, Stargate Universe now has the opportunity to finish telling the story that they had started to roll out through the television and capitalise on that massive cliffhanger from the end of Season 2. Okay, once again, Josh Liston here from Australia. Joshua C. Liston at Gmail if you wanted to send me an email, at Joshua C. Liston on Twitter and Instagram. And finally, if you happen to have your own podcast and the grind of editing and producing has maybe slowed you down or you want to produce more episodes or anything like that and you want them to sound good and be pleasant to your podcast audience, soup2nutspodcasting.com, which is my company and co-producers of this episode of On The Bubble Podcast. Okay, talk to you soon.